Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Today we are gonna go over one of the most common problems I see with steel trimmers and pole saws. First, let's take this outside and show you exactly what this steel FS110 is doing. Now the problem is not with the starting. This thing will actually run great. So this is actually a really simple fix that if you have the parts and the tools that you can do by yourself at home to save you time, money, and frustration in the future. Now I see this mostly on the um, FS110s, the FS100s, the uh, HT pole saws, and most all of them take the same clutch. The clutch part number is a 4180-160-2000. Um, they are about $25, so not too expensive. Um, for this project, you're going to want to get a piston stop or use a rope to stop the piston. Um, this is a 10 millimeter piston stop. A spark plug tool to remove the spark plug. And I think it's a 10 millimeter uh, nut driver to take off the bolts that hold the clutch on to the machine. You also want some form of T27 to remove all the screws. All right, to start off, we're going to remove this top cover. First, we're going to take the spark plug out. Remember when removing it to be careful, twist it back and forth because you don't want to rip your spark plug boot off. Next, we're gonna take out the two T27 screws from the front and there is also one in the back. Then you can remove the top cover. Sometimes it's a little stuck and actually gets pinched in between here after they've been on for a long time. So you might have to take a flathead and pry it just a little bit. Just like that. Next, we have one more T27 bolt holding this um, clutch housing to the machine and it's down here. We're gonna remove that one. All right, next we're going to remove the um, one screw that's holding the shaft to the clutch housing. Shaft will come out. And at this point, I like to twist the uh, shaft, and I can tell that when I twist it, the head actually is moving now. So the, the gear head is fine, the shaft is fine. We're pretty confident that it's the clutch. This thing doesn't want to come out. Try it just a little bit. Yeah, you hear that? That's the clutch making some releasing sound. <laughs> Let me get our throttle cable out of there. Maybe now. Oh Lord. Wow. So there's two issues I see with these clutches most of the time. Either they've exploded and they stay constantly engaged or they've rusted closed and they will not um, engage. So this one, it must've sat for a long period of time. It's got tons of rust in this bell housing. We're gonna clean all that out and uh, it should be fine. But 
This thing is just rusted so bad. We're gonna go ahead and take that off. And actually it doesn't have T27s instead of the 10 millimeter. So we're going to put the piston stop in and get this clutch off. Got that down in there. Now we're gonna use our T27 to get these, these screws out. We've got it locked into place, so it just makes it easier. I mean, you can hold on to it, but I'm not that strong, so. There's one. Get it so rusted, I don't want it to strip out in the center. Rust flying everywhere. Now the new clutch does not come with this plate. It also does not come with the spacers, um, bushings inside for um, the screws to go through. So hopefully these will come out. If not, we're gonna replace these bushings also. Yeah, they're really stuck in there. So let's try to get this plate off and uh, if we can't get the bushings out, I'm gonna go grab some more of these bushings. Well, the plate's coming off. It also has um, two wave washers underneath. You'll wanna notice which way they are at a, a curve so you put them back on correctly. So we're just gonna set those down there. And yeah. Oop. They're not gonna come out. All right, so we are gonna reuse these parts, so let's get to cleaning this rust off. Now that we've got everything cleaned up, we can start putting it all back together. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is grab one of the plates, the outside ones, and they actually, there's a certain way it goes in, so you need to pay attention. If you look at it, there's a hump on one side and it goes inward on the other. The humps on each one of these go in towards the clutch. So we're going to start out with one with the humps towards us, and we're going to go ahead and put our bushings in on each side. You just press each one in till they're seated perfectly. Next thing you know, or you wanna put your washers in. And remember, whenever we took them out, we had it upside down, so they were this way. So we're going to wanna flip them over since we've got it upside down now. So the hump's gonna go up towards us. So on your clutch, it actually has arrows. Those arrows will need to be pointed out towards you. So the backside doesn't have any writing or arrows on it. So we're gonna go ahead and flip the arrows towards us because this is going out of the, uh, away from the engine. And we're going to put it onto those bushings. And next we can just put our other side on here just like this and the clutch is ready to go back on the machine. All right, to install back on the machine, we've got our bolts. We're gonna go ahead and just stick them back in the clutch to keep those uh, plates lined up and we can line it back up onto the flywheel and screw it in with our fingers as far as we can. That way we know the threads are working in the correct position. All right, I'm gonna turn the flywheel around to where it's locked in the other position so whenever I go to tighten it down, it doesn't spin around on me. clutch is back on we can go ahead and put our clutch housing back on all right so we're ready to put our clutch housing back on um i went ahead and put a little bit of grease on these prongs that go into the engine here just so it doesn't get stuck again um, so we're just going to line those prongs up with these uh, holes in the engine housings and we can put our bottom screw back in to tighten everything down. Once you have your bottom screw in, everything's pretty tight. We can go ahead and put our shaft back into the machine. have to 
come in and out just a little bit to get that square head to fit up in there. Then you just want to line the shaft up to where it looks flat with the engine. And we're able to put our screw back in here. That's the only screw tightening everything down. We can remove the piston stop. Put our top cover back on. Make sure your throttle cable is in its slot. And replace the two screws in the front and the uh, screw in the back. We're done. Let's go take it outside and see if it's going to spin. All right, let's see if it's going to work. 